Hey guys, it's Chris. From the complete disaster of the USSR Moose Cavalry units to the Scottish cat that everyone would love to have, here are 11 shocking animals that we haven't really been able to domesticate. Number 11, zebras. One of the most boggling animals we have never been able to domesticate is the zebra. This is strange simply because you would think that a zebra would be very similar to a horse. However, we have just never been able to domesticate these animals no matter how much we've tried. Zebras are way too unpredictable. They're notorious for attacking people, and they don't do well under pressure. Zebras have a super abrupt nature, and even though people have tried in the past to domesticate them and always failed, they're still trying to this very day. I mean, horses can be very impressive, and imagine if you could stride in on a zebra with those striking markings. It's just the way we go about it now is a little different. In the past few years, people have been trying to breed zebras with horses or donkeys to make a domesticated hybrid animal with the docile nature of a horse or donkey and the cool appearance of a zebra. The results have been known either as a zorse or a zonkey, and they do look pretty cool. The first ever hybrid zebra was back in 1899. And even though that was a hundred years ago, we still are a far way off from having an entire platoon of hybrid zebra horse animals. Which is unfortunate, because I'd love to ride around on a zonkey, wouldn't you? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Number 10. Moose in the USSR This is a strange story. First of all, moose can indeed be tamed. Moose are surprisingly docile and agreeable animals. They are enormous monsters that kind of look like they belong in Lord of the Rings or something, but would you want to ride one? Would they be okay with it? The big question here is why do people ride horses and not a moose? Moose are super cool animals that have actually been domesticated, but they were more so for their milk and meat like cattle. They weren't domesticated to ride. That brings me to the moose of the USSR. In the early 1930s, the Soviet Union supposedly had an idea to make a communist cavalry unit composed of moose instead of horses, because moose are strong, large, and they're quick in the snow, and that seemed like the perfect fit for the communist army in extreme weather. However, with the Soviet-Finnish War in 1939, then World War II immediately after, the idea was abandoned. Moose were too untrainable and were actually very susceptible to disease, much more so than horses. Keep in mind that horses and humans have been together for thousands of years, which means they are actually domesticated animals like dogs that have been bred and taken care of by humans to exhibit certain traits. The training of military moose came to a halt, and since then nobody has really tried to domesticate the animals. The issue here is that we have gotten too used to hunting them. They are considered game, and now it is actually illegal in most places to keep game animals as pets. Number 9. Elephants Contrary to popular belief, elephants can absolutely not be domesticated. Just because an animal is in captivity does not make it domesticated. They've never been tamed in the same way that dogs have. At the very first chance, elephants will always try to escape and are still a wild animal. Animals need to be bred for a minimum of 12 generations, selectively and diligently, in order for them to be even close to domestication. This has never happened with elephants. They have been and still are wild animals. Sure, we've been using elephants for about 3,000 years, but we almost always capture them out of the wild. Some elephants might be bred in captivity for one or two generations, but they're not bred selectively to have desirable traits. It takes such a ridiculous amount of work to properly domesticate an animal, and no organization has ever seen it through with elephants. Even in countries where they used elephants in warfare, and more recently in circuses, or where elephants are in great abundance, nobody's been able to properly domesticate them. When you see elephants in shows doing tricks, it's literally just because they've been captured and trained, and they're smart enough to know what to do so that they don't get lashed or beaten. There is a huge difference between being tamed and being domesticated, since being domesticated means that selective breeding makes animals much easier to handle than their wild counterparts. No wild animal can be domesticated within their specific lifetime. And now for number 8. But first, which animal do you wish you could have as a pet? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Number 8. Rhinoceros 
Rhinos are huge, and despite being herbivores, they can have a mean temper and never shy away from a fight. This temperament has meant that rhinos are virtually impossible to tame, let alone domesticate. They simply won't accept a human as the head of a herd and can be deadly to anyone that approaches too closely. Add to this the fact that they reproduce very slowly, and it takes as long as 12 years to reach sexual maturity, it would take years and years to breed desirable traits. And for what, really? Early humans domesticated animals that gave us food, like milk and meat, or could carry us and our cargo. Animals that have been domesticated, for example, typically take less than a year to give birth and reach maturity within a few years. There are, though, interesting stories about rhinos that have been tamed in one way or another. There are some records of war rhinos being used in the Battle of Constantinople at some point in the 16th century, which, like war elephants, were most likely captured in the wild and used for human advantage. Number 7. Wolves Wolves and dogs may be genetically similar, but human beings have never been able to tame an actual wild wolf. While some people do care for wolves without incident, these animals have never truly been domesticated. An evolutionary biologist from the University of Massachusetts Armhurst has claimed that the big difference between wolves and dogs is sensory experience and socialization. Wolves and dogs both go through a short socialization window, which is a time when they can be introduced to new things like other animals and people, which they then become comfortable with throughout their entire lives. However, once the socialization window closes, new things simply don't work. And researchers believe that wolves have a much shorter socialization window than dogs. When they're super young, their sense of smell develops first. And afterwards, any new smells are foreign and possibly dangerous. This is why it's impossible to tame or domesticate a wild wolf unless it's adopted as a baby. And even then, wolves retain all of their primal instincts and can be incredibly dangerous to humans even when raised in captivity from just a pup. And remember, it takes about 12 generations of carefully monitored breeding to get a domesticated animal. And while dogs and wolves have a common ancestor, the main difference is that our best friend has been with us for a very, very long time. Number 6. Tigers Tigers are not house cats. No matter how many people have tried to tame and domesticate tigers, it's never worked. Even those who have kept tigers from a very young age have not been able to domesticate them properly. No example is better than Joe Exotic from the hit TV show Tiger King. This guy had a zoo full of tigers that he claimed were domesticated and friendly, and yet they bit off one of his employees' arms and even attacked him on several occasions. While Joe Exotic claimed repeatedly that tigers can be domesticated, the truth is that they absolutely can't. When you show up to a tiger sanctuary and play with the animals, you're actually playing with very young tigers. They may look big and scary, but they're pretty much just babies. The truth is that the United States Department of Agriculture only allows people to interact with tigers that are aged from between 4 and 12 weeks. Afterwards, they're considered too big and too dangerous to interact with people. They can turn on you in a moment. Just look at Siegfried and Roy. This is one of the reasons why breeders are always making baby tigers and forgetting about the older ones. It's also probably the reason why so many adult tigers magically disappear at places that are owned by people like Joe Exotic and the other guy from the Netflix special named Doc Antell. The truth is that tigers cannot be domesticated. They've never been domesticated, and they likely never will be domesticated. The adult tigers that are no longer cute still have wild instincts, and while people have admired the big cats over thousands of years, they are still predators. Number 5. Panda Bears Panda bears seem like the perfect animal for domestication. They're big, they're adorable, and they look super cuddly. But people have never figured out a way to domesticate panda bears. And one of the reasons for that is because there just aren't very many of them left. Only about 2,000 in the entire world. And the only way to domesticate pandas would be to have a giant field of bamboo outside of your house where they could breed for several centuries. And this is because pandas eat roughly 50 pounds of bamboo every single day. And to eat all that food, pandas spend between 10 and 15 hours a day just munching. They're not social, and they don't like people, and they don't breed easily. Another interesting fact about panda domestication is that you can't get a panda. According to Business Insider, almost every panda in the world is owned by China. The Chinese government literally owns just about every giant panda on the planet Earth and they rent them to foreign zoos for $1 million a year. Plus, if a baby panda is born in a foreign zoo, that zoo must pay a $400,000 baby tax. 
Considering the Chinese government literally has a monopoly on a living animal, it's highly doubtful that anyone is going to be making any plans to domesticate these creatures. Right now, everyone is just focused on saving the species. No need to make them into pets. Number 4. Crocodilians Crocodilians are not ideal pets. Crocodilians include caimans, alligators, and crocodiles. These are some of the oldest animals on Earth, living millions of years ago alongside some of the most ferocious dinosaurs ever. And while they are in abundance in the United States and other countries, and while people do keep some crocodiles and alligators as pets on their property, these beasts are far from domesticated. They can attack, they can kill, and they will always be wild animals. Crocodiles and alligators are obviously super smart, but to domesticate them is just not something that could happen. Unlike some other animals, crocodiles will never learn to fetch your slippers, and they'll never respond to their name. What crocodilians can do is learn to recognize people and interact with them based on previous experiences. They can even memorize events, such as feeding time or when it's time for their enclosure to be cleaned. But if you're not careful, a crocodilian can easily mistake cleaning time for feeding time and bite off your leg. So no, they're not domesticated. They just don't have that part of the brain that shows affection. Number 3. Dolphins Dolphins might seem tame, but they're actually just really highly intelligent. The truth is that dolphins that are caged are not tamed or domesticated to be friends with humans, they're simply trapped. Dolphins in captivity are still 100% wild, and can never have their needs met so long as they're kept from the ocean. Even when a dolphin is born in captivity, it's not domesticated. When you see them doing tricks and performing for large crowds, World Animal Protection claims that that's because they're often deprived of food, so they're eager to perform tricks in order to eat. It's a survival technique. While it's true that dolphins can bond with their human trainers, it's generally not by choice. If it were up to the dolphin, they would swim back out into the ocean and then just do their own thing. One of the biggest issues is that people always think that dolphins are happy because they kind of look like they're smiling. But that's actually just the shape of their face. While humans have managed to domesticate dogs and cats and livestock, trying to domesticate a wild marine animal like a dolphin is so far beyond our capabilities right now that it's not going to happen until people are probably living on Mars. Maybe not even then. Domesticating a dolphin would be like domesticating a shark. You might be able to become friends with one, but dolphins are not animals that need us, and we don't need them to provide anything for us either. Number 2. The Untamable Cat Cats are pretty tame. Even a feral cat can be introduced to a home and gradually domesticated and calmed. But in the highlands of Scotland, there's an infamous wild cat that is untamable. It's a small cat that looks like any other house cat, but they have apparently dwindled to a small population of only about 400 individuals, all of them living in Britain, and none of them domesticated. In a 2007 academic paper, it was claimed that all domesticated cats descended from the Middle Eastern wildcat. Further research from the University of Oxford went on to suggest that these same cats kind of domesticated themselves by wandering into our homes, sleeping on our beds, and just generally being around humans since around 12,000 years ago. This cat from Scotland is now one of the rarest mammals on Earth, and the only surviving cat family native to the island that has yet to be domesticated itself. And this is because researchers believe that it spent nearly 2 million years in complete isolation, never getting close enough to humans to become accustomed to them. And it's likely because of the sparse population and vast emptiness of the Scottish landscape. This cat is about 50% larger than an average house cat and it has very dense fur, and 18 retractable claws that make it kind of a killing machine. Not a single one of these cats has ever been tamed by a human, even when born in captivity. Number 1. Chimpanzees You would think that since chimpanzees share an outstanding similarity with humans in terms of genetics, that they would be easy to domesticate. But that's not the case. In all seriousness, throughout just a few generations, it would make sense that selective breeding in chimpanzees could cause them to become just as tamed and agreeable as dogs, and infinitely smarter. However, that's never happened. Either nobody has cared enough to try and do it, or it's just never been a worthwhile endeavor. Even chimpanzees born in captivity make terrible pets, because once they turn 8 years old, they're too strong for a normal person to handle, and they can cause some serious damage. Chimpanzees are four times stronger than humans. And a single temper tantrum can end up with your pet chimp beating you like an experienced UFC fighter. 
Hopefully now that chimpanzees are interacting more frequently with humans, in situations like zoos and animal sanctuaries, maybe in 5,000 years they will be domesticated. And then maybe we can dress them up in cute little outfits. But that is a long way from today. So if you could magically domesticate one of these animals and turn it into your best friend, which one would you pick? Let me know what you think in the comments, and thanks for watching. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, and come back soon for another awesome video. Of course, it's morally objectionable, but which of these animals sound like they would make the coolest pet of your own?